We're going to have a look at the main markets and what has been happening over the past 24 hours. We're going to break that down with the CTKS methodology so that we can understand whether smart money is looking to buy or to sell. We're also going to assess risk on and risk off sentiment through the crypto market. The crypto market is very, very sensitive to risk inside main financial markets. This is something that even if you're not in crypto, you must be aware of. You can look at crypto to give you a forward sentiment reading on where the markets might be going because it's just risk sensitive. Stay tuned. It's going to be a lot of fun. And always remember the price is always moving in a wave. That's rule four. Yesterday, the CTKS family celebrated its second birthday. Wow, how cool is that? And the comments and the love is just so beautiful. We have the most incredible global family. Thank you so much to everybody for being a part of it. Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. Having a look at the main markets, in the past trading session, we saw the VIX spike up, the DXY spike up and yield spike up. That wasn't good news for gold, for bonds or for the main markets. An interesting thing that we're seeing is that oil is making a bit of a breakout. It could retrace here, but it's got a good momentum and it's broken out from that downward trend line. On a daily basis, there's still positive momentum inside the S&P 500. We saw that in the past trading session, the S&P 500 broke down through this very important smart money buy level. It couldn't hold it, so it went through two safety nets down to the 4107 mark, which is a very strong structural support level. And this is actually why we use the CTKS method to understand the strength of safety nets below price. It could be easy to think that different charts are independent from each other. They are not. They are all dependent. When we look at Bitcoin, we saw that it actually lost a structural level, but you can't see it this way. You need to use the CTKS method. This specific Stanfield zone is drawn from all of Bitcoin's price history dating back all the way to 2009. You can see when we cut through that, the buyers stepped in around the 25,900 mark and pushed the price up. It's very common for any particular chart to break through a smart money buy area, try and make its way down to the next one and then come back and retest. That is what it's all about inside financial markets. Rule 446 is very important. All markets are intercorrelated and interdependent. What this means is all charts depend on each other. They can't stand in isolation. We saw the S&P 500 lose one important structural level, but bounce at another. What happened to the NASDAQ? Without CTKS ODMS, which is objective dynamic market structure, we just won't know. Objective dynamic market structure or ODMS is applied through the CTKS method to the NASDAQ from 1973. This is not recent indicative price. We can see that when the NASDAQ fell through its support level here, it bounded to the next one. This is not as strong as the one below, around the 12300 mark. Just please keep that in mind. If you've applied CTKS, Objective Dynamic Market Structure, on the VIX, you'll know that there's a huge amount of resistance up here on the VIX. Remember, all charts are interdependent and intercorrelated. The VIX did spike, but it's having trouble getting through that resistance. And we can see that playing out on the other charts as well. The debt ceiling talks are making the markets nervous and they're pushing a flight into safety. And we can see that if the US was to default, the yields coming up is very, very sensible because they're riskier. US treasuries would become risky. That's why yields are going up. Also, people are a little bit concerned that the markets may be overextended, especially with yields coming up, with the current pressure on the financial system. When we look at the DXY, we did see the DXY spike up, but there's a lot of smart money resistance around this 103.872 mark. 
the DXY could have a little bit of trouble breaking through it. It may tend to consolidate just for a little while. One thing that we do see, there's a lot of positive momentum currently on the DXY. The markets are very, very tumultuous at the moment. Wow, what a word. Said another way, there's a lot of uncertainty inside financial markets. How do you prepare for it? Psychological preparation is vastly important because markets pay you for your synchronization and they don't pay you for anything else. How do you get synchronized? It's all about your knowledge and your courage. You must have a mastery of emotional control, especially fear. This is not an easy thing to do. To get around that, we need to stack probabilities. We need to look at how the charts interdepend on each other. Always remember that you control the trade or investment, but the market controls the return. If you're actively learning every day, you will increase your synchronization far, far more than anybody who does not do that. Gold is not a fan of increasing dollar strength, DXY strength, and increasing yields. It doesn't like it at all. And we can see that gold actually sold down. But how did gold relate to its objective dynamic market structure? Dynamic market structure marked up from 1833, not for the past couple of months or even for the past couple of years, but from 1833. We can see that gold was trying to break up to this 18, sorry, 1984 level. Oh, very George Orwell. But it didn't hold and it lost its support around 1972. What did that mean? It was heading down to the next smart money buy area. You notice that this next smart money buy area around 1954 is close to this one around 1960. That's why price congealed. Look at this. It's utterly fascinating when you understand the true resistance, the true support inside markets. It's like getting x-ray vision. These are the areas where the algorithms will step in and buy or sell. US oil has been trading since 1861. If we look at this chart just like this, it's really hard to determine where the true support and resistances actually are. One thing that we can reveal with CTKS objective dynamic market structure is that there was a lot of support around this 70 to 71 mark. There's also a lot of resistance up near the 75 to 76 mark. Keep this in mind. Junk bonds, just like Bitcoin, gives us a very good risk on or risk off indication. We can see that junk bonds have been trending down. No wonder there's a lot of turmoil inside financial markets at the moment. It will be resolved. The question to investors and traders is always the same. Where is the floor? Where is the ceiling? And how strong are they? Is the floor made out of paper? Because that's not going to hold very well. Is the ceiling made out of concrete? It will get rejected before it even gets there. One thing to note. That junk bonds, currently 90-30, are around a very strong smart money buy area. That is like concrete down there. Very interesting. We see the S&P 500 down around its concrete support level. Junk bonds around the same. The DXY coming into resistance, but it's got a little bit more room that it can move. We could see a technical bounce inside the markets. When we look at the US 10 year yield, one of the things that we know when we mark up this chart since 1912 with the CTKS method, which reveals objective dynamic market structure or where the true resistance and true support are inside any price chart. The US 10 year was coming down to a area of very strong smart money support. It was likely to bounce. Marking up the chart of the US 10 year yield from 1912 shows us this. There was a lot of smart money buy activity in this particular zone. It's little wonder that, that yields bounced and bounced they did. You'll often get a technical confluence inside the market with actual market events as well, such as the debt ceiling. CTKS method was the first method to uncover objective dynamic market structure and it's incredibly valuable to know where the floors are, where the ceilings are, where things may go because we're always seeing smart money ping between ODMS lines. I'll give you an illustration with Tesla. 
Marking up Tesla from 2010, Tesla's drop in price from this smart money buy area turned into a sell area. And where was the next safety net when price dropped from around that 183.77 mark? It was here around the 165. You can see how these safety nets are tested. Price is always ping ponging between them. Very, very valuable knowledge for traders. The strength of these particular supports can indicate if price will have further negative side momentum or could consolidate. Around this 165 was a very powerful confluence of different smart money buy levels and we saw Tesla's price action just bound around there trying to get back up to this 184 mark. It eventually did so, got above but was rejected. These particular levels are drawn scientifically, they're not cherry picked and we never do recent indicative price action to understand where ODMS is. If we do get a technical bounce inside the market, Tesla will certainly try to head to this 193 or even to the 203 level. If we see the DXY continue to gain strength and the S&P 500 and NASDAQ start to break down, we would expect Tesla to come back to that 165 level. I invented the CTKS method after more than three decades inside financial markets because I was absolutely and utterly fascinated with crypto price movements. Crypto is an incredibly volatile market. I used to trade the VIX, which is about as volatile as you can get inside main markets. Hence the attraction to crypto was instant. But the concept is, when we look at price charts, what we're actually trying to do is to uncover where objective dynamic market structure actually is. Where is the smart money leaning in and where are they running away? Looking at Ethereum, we can see the price has been bounding around this 1805 level. We can see that there is definitely a smart money buy area around this 1800 mark. But what is more interesting is the safety nets below Ethereum's price. We can see one here around the 1700 mark. But when we get down to around this 1590 mark, that particular safety net is very strong. What does this basically mean? If Ethereum was to drop down, we wouldn't expect it to go too far below this 1585 level. Why is that? Because when you have a lot of buying interest inside the market, the buyers are there. They're just waiting to action their orders. One thing that you may also notice, Ethereum doesn't have a lot of resistance above its current price either. What is the relationship between Ethereum and the main markets? Ethereum is a tier two chart. There's ETH right there. Tier two and tier three and all the other tiers are impacted by the confluence of activity inside tier one charts. Tier one charts move the markets. It's very important to track these tier ones. If you're not tracking them, you will be at the whim and mercy of the market and will have enormous problems synchronizing. Solana is a very good crypto to keep your eye on. It's incredibly sensitive to movements in and around Bitcoin's gravity. When we look at Solana without the CTKS method, we don't know where smart money is buying or selling. We don't know where there's algorithmic confidence and confluence inside Solana's price chart. One thing to always bear in mind, you must understand where objective dynamic market structure is and the only way to find it is through the CTKS method. When price dips below a smart money buy area and we can see a cracking of the concrete here. It's not such a good sign with Solana. Back on around the 21st of May, what this indicates, this cracking here, this particular support level is just not holding. We came up to try and retest, but it failed. Where are we heading to if we go down? to the next smart money safety net. You can think of these as safety nets. It's a really good way to look at it. And if we come back up, what are we going to test? We're going to test the ceiling. Safety net, ceiling, safety net, ceiling. This is just the way it goes. But what happens if we don't come back and test the ceiling? We're going down to the next safety net and in all likelihood coming back up to test the recent ceiling. This gives you a lot of confidence 
and can help you to synchronize in with the markets. Also, you need to be aware of what is below current price in terms of safety nets. XRP's had the market's attention recently, and XRP really needs to win the court case against the SEC, and it's already spent $200 million in its defense. It's literally fighting for the entire crypto industry. You'll hear a lot of mainstream news about crypto, and it's crazy. What's actually occurring is that the central banks don't want a flight to safety outside the financial system, and they're inventing all sorts of theories as to anything that can hemorrhage money. Of course, the banks need the deposits. They're bleeding. When you see news headlines, just bear this in mind. It's really important to understand. Crypto is simply the upgrade of the internet as it currently stands to the internet of value. If you could travel back 20 plus years to the birth, to the dawn of the internet and get into Amazon or anything else interrelated, you would have been pretty good because around that time, everybody was saying the internet is a fad and the government tried to shut it down because it put the postal services into obsolescence. There's a picture of Jeff Bazos working in Amazon with a door for his desk. What a legend. But the concept was, a lot of people said, Jeff, are you nuts? This internet thing is a fad. The government will shut it down because it interferes with the postal and telecommunication services. At the birth of the internet, they had email to fax gateways. You remember those fax things? And email was going to kill snail mail. Yeah, that postal thing that you get once a week, if you're lucky. There was a lot of activity that newspapers could never be read online. Today, where do you read your newspaper? Again, go back 20 years and think and compare and contrast how you felt about the internet then, if you were around then, and how you feel about the internet now. That's exactly what's happening with crypto. Why don't people learn from the past? Oh, I know, because smart money doesn't want you to, but we do here. We want you to be more of a financial and emotional blessing to yourself and those you love. Invention in innovation is the way to become that. All right, back to XRP. What's XRP up to right now? Through the lens of objective dynamic market structure, which can only be seen through the scientific standards-based methodology of the CTKS method, we can see that XRP was testing this smart money buy area. It was testing it, retesting, cracking the concrete, not so good, weakening, and then finally under. I'm going to show you something. It's very important to understand at around this 4391 level, just around here, there's a mass of smart money buy areas. As a community, as a global family, we do active learning every single day. I want you to think about it like this. As we've looked at those different charts, we've got a bit of a feeling on what the market could do because we know where the true resistance and true support is inside the markets. We've looked at many charts. We know that the VIX resisted, came back because there was so much structure inside the markets. We know that the DXY is getting up to a structural level. We know a lot of things. We know about gold. One thing, if we see a bounce in the major indices, and they haven't broken support yet, so that's something to bear in mind. What could happen to other charts that you're trading? And what other charts are you trading or investing in? Please let me know in the comments. Crypto is definitely very volatile, but it's a beautiful market to be involved in from an investment and trading perspective. All investors become traders anytime they buy or sell, so buying well is your key. Your profits are made when you buy. A lot of people think that the profits are made when you sell. They're actually made when you buy. That is rule seven. Buying creates profits. If you're buying well, it doesn't matter what the market is doing. You will be profitable. Looking at Bitcoin and its overall directional gravitational pull is incredibly important. Why is it important? You might say, Ken, I don't even trade or invest in Bitcoin and I never will. And that's okay. Everybody's different. 
the thing is, if you're investing or trading in another alt, and it doesn't matter what that alt is, that alt is going to be influenced by Bitcoin's gravitational pull. We can see the gravitational pull of Bitcoin right here. Look at that in Ethereum. It's just pinging each other. What about BNB pinging each other? What about XRP? As Bitcoin came down here and down here and down here, what did XRP do? It came down. You'll see this playing out in ADA. You'll see it playing out in Doge, in Solana, in Matic. You'll see it playing out everywhere. The direction of Bitcoin sets the entire crypto market on its course. Turning to the greatest gainers in the past 24 hours, there's not many of them. What does this actually mean? It means that the market is selling down and it's selling down with a broad base sell down. The greatest losers in the past 24 hours, you can see they're down a little bit more, but it's not that great. We're not looking at double digit negative, at least in the top 100. A very kind and grateful thank you to the Meditative Mind who's offering a partial masterclass scholarship. If you're interested in learning how the markets intercorrelate, work together, how to trade, how to disentangle the mass of confusing information in the finance industry, how to understand charts and leverage them, then the masterclass is a very, very valuable resource. If you're interested in the partial masterclass scholarship, there's a link in the description of this video where you can apply. To get synchronized, always make sure you have your foundations. You're looking more broadly than just the chart you're trading or investing in. Trying to find the market's focus is incredibly important and opportunities do reset every single day. Enhancing your pattern recognition is key. Before you buy or sell, and there's so many ways to do that, always consider mastering emotional control. You are a professional and this is a professional market. The more knowledge that you collect, the greater your understanding will be on interdependencies. It's important to make sure that you're not sucked into panic. Don't get sucked into blame. Get into the learning, the patience and the rules. Start to stack your probabilities. But most importantly, think with a positive excellence mindset. Positive excellence is all about learning. It's about humility and patience, persistence, commitment. It's all about keeping your cool when others are losing it. Inner peace and outer peace are very important. You don't have to become something to be happy. You can be happy right now if you just choose gratitude. A lot of times we negatively compare ourselves to other people. How about we start to positively compare ourselves to others? There's so many people who are worse off, far worse off than we are. Let's just think about that and be grateful for where we're at right now. Keeping a positive attitude at all times is incredibly important. The markets are very chaotic. They'll play to your darkest fears. That's exactly why we need to be dedicated and committed. Have a mindset that you either win or learn and never blame. As soon as you blame, you disempower yourself. You cut off all of your learning. And if you don't learn, the markets will eat you alive. Also know that we're not in a competitive landscape, although it may feel that way at times. The market simply pays you on how much you are synchronized. If you're in the flow, if you're synchronized, the market will pay you full stop. If you're desynchronized, that means that fear is entering your decisions. Or you just don't have the amount of knowledge that the market requires that you have. Note I said the market requires that you have. Not that you need, the market needs. In those cases, you may think that things are against you. They're not. Going slow to go fast is the key. And knowing that this world is for you. This world needs you. There's only one of you in this world and you are totally unique. You're irreplaceable and this world will never ever see anyone like you again. You do not have to compete. You just have to be you. But always do it with kindness, integrity and gratitude, especially integrity. Integrity is important. If you're doing things like ripping off other people 
or doing things like that, it's not the way to go. That will come back and bite you. Always remember, karma is real. It's just delayed. As a professional investor or trader, it's important for you to keep positive at all times, keep learning at all times. This mindset component doesn't gel with a lot of people who are new, who think the financial markets are all about gambling or focusing on the next million X. That's an unrealistic expectation and those people will get burned. If they manage to stay in the markets for long enough, they'll mature to a point where they say, wow, I can't believe I used to do that. But everybody does, so it's nothing new. Don't worry about it. Just try to move through it if you're stuck there right now. Have a great day or night ahead, my friends. And Kate and I look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow. Bye for now. Bye. Haha, <laughs> got it to say bye.